Hello and welcome to the NASCAR Regional Pro Cup Series for your ninth race here at the Myrtle Beach Speedway. In the Utica Home Track Series, this track is infamous for being the final event of the year and usually a wreck fest. We might see something similar today, though we have less cars on track than usual. The Regional Pro Cup Series will have their event afterward with all 35 cars. Right now, we take a look at the NASCAR lights as we take a look at the lineup. Sean Angel seems to have an issue on the grid, and he is pulling down the pit road. Unfortunate for him, who won last week at Buffalo Downs. Well, sorry, the week before that, my mistake. But Dylan Young on the pole, Alex Pedro to the outside in the O2 machine. That car is unsponsored on the front of it. That would be an interesting win for him if he could uh, take it on the outside. Hagen and with the second row, we're racing here for the NASCAR lights. As Dylan Young, car number 52, trying to take it underneath. He won last week at Lonesome Pine Speedway. Makes some contact with the wall, and fortunately everyone is going to keep it racing. As Cody Hagen is going to make the pass for the lead as James Silver Fox follows underneath. Oh, we have some trouble. Rick Witt, Alex Pedro going up in the air. Let's see what happened. Oh, uh, there's Alex Pedro in the O2 machine. He had such a great starting position. But it looks like he's going to lose this one unless he can catch up to the rest of the pack. Angel still on pit road. Let's take a look at what happened here. The O2 machine just gets carried up the wall and uh, ends up by his wheels. Fortunately, he'll be able to continue this race. But uh, it's not looking too good for him. As Joshua Collar is going to make some contact with Dylan Young. Chase Adapter crashes into him. Rick Witt involved. Norman Jason, Max Watson. Biggie Spencer is slowing by it, so it looks like Pedro might be able to get a couple of spots as uh, Jace Adapter seems to be limping to the pit lane. I think he's done for today. James Silver Fox making the pass on Cody Hagen for the lead. Silver Fox has had an up and down season. He still has a chance for this championship, though, and a win would definitely help him out as he continues down the backstretch. He makes some contact with the wall, so is Hagen. Skirvin and Young battle for the position behind them. Silver Fox is looking for some good luck this season. He felt that this season has been an uphill battle, but he still has a chance for glory today. As he's got a little bit of damage to the front of that 077 as he makes more contact with the wall. Julian D'Artagnus Jr., card number 31, has an impressive points position. So this could be the day that uh, D'Artagnus can get a breakaway run. He's passed Rick Witt and Max Watson. He's about sixth place on track. If he can gain a couple more spots, he might be able to uh, get some good ground in the standings. He's trying to catch up to Nicholas Guerra in the number 93 machine. Guerra caps off the top five. Dylan Young has made it past Cody Hagen in the 27. But wait a second, slides up the track. Little contact with the wall as Hagen trying to make the pass back underneath with a little help from Kate Skirvin, who's having a great effort today in that number 07 machine. All the while, they're letting James Silverfox get away in the 077, so they ho better hope that they uh, get this battle sorted out so they can start drafting and work their way to the front as Skirvin's going to pull into second place. And that's how this battle's going to sort itself out. Max Watson, the 046, started off so great, but later in the season, he's been having some struggles. He's dropped through the standings a little bit, but uh, still has a shot for that championship. He's got to make sure that today goes smoothly. He's passed Rick Witt for 7th place. He's going after Julian Dertinius Jr. for the 6th place position. But can he take it? As he's trying to use uh, Rick Witt to give himself a little bit of drafting help, but Dertinius Jr. does have a decent race car. He may not be the easiest to catch up to as Watson trying to catch up to Norman Jason, who's been his bitter rival this season. Dartanius hits the wall and looks like Watson's going to get that easy pass after all. Cody Hagen working his way back into second place passing Kate Skirvin. They've been on a draft for a little bit and they've been able to catch up to James Silverfox. Silverfox hit the wall as Hagen trying to squeeze his way underneath. He's got a good run. If uh, Silver Fox can keep it, that would be great for him, but Hagen has a great run on the inside. That car has been fast this entire race, and Silver Fox is going to get left out to dry, and he makes a little bit of contact with the wall. Skirvin in it as well. Hagen back to the forefront. Earlier in the year, he was a back marker, battling for some of the back positions, but uh, nowadays he's been up near the front. 
Alex Pedro in the 0-2 has caught up a little bit. He's starting to see the rest of the traffic, like Joshua Collard, and I believe Biggie Spencer is racing with him. But uh, Pedro, it looks like things are pretty much done for him. He still has a chance, though. These two are within striking distance, but a win is a little out of the picture. He might be out of the championship hunt. Norman Jysung had a good run. He's going to draft with Rick Witt, and both of them are going to get by D'Artanius and Watson. And whoa, we have a uh, car slow in the middle of the racetrack. That's Dylan Young, and that's going to really throw off Julian D'Artagnan's Jr., who wasn't sure whether to go high or low. What happened? Ah, uh, he was racing with Kate Skirvin, and Dylan Young spins himself out. Good avoidance by these five drivers that caught up to him, including Nicholas Guerra, who now works his way up into the fourth place position. Norman Dreising, down now in fifth, as uh, Watson and Witt tried to make it three wide back there. Nicholas Guerra has had a great second half of the season. If only he ran the full schedule, though. He was the replacement for Logan York. York moving up to the top series. Guerra might have been a championship competitor had he uh, been from the beginning. Sean Angel, Carter 69 just to give you a report, he is back out on the racetrack, but he's off the lead lap. I believe he's one lap down, which isn't horrible, but not good for him in terms of trying to work his way into the main event. And Sean Angel uh, looks like he's going to lose that chance to run for the championship going into the final race. We've mentioned Kate Skirvin a couple of times today. She's had a great effort in the 07 car. It's past James Silverfox. And this could be a career best for her, along with Cody Hagen, as uh, Hagen's completely new to the idea of being in the main event. Silver Fox not going to let Skirvin go that easily. As Silver Fox makes the pass underneath, takes it back in the Intuit machine. But can they catch up to Cody Hagen? We're running out of laps. There's only a few to go. Oh, more trouble. Julian D'Artini's Jr. is around. And fortunately, I was going to avoid him. He almost backed up into Biggie Spencer. And that's going to cost Julian D'Artini's Jr. He was at first looking at the points lead. But now it looks like it's going to go to someone else. We'll have to see if he's still eligible for that championship, however. But coming to the line... Silver Fox is a little too late as Cody Hagen gets his first career Dascar Lights win. He's going to transfer over to the main event and drive that number 95 machine that we've seen all season long. Congratulations to Cody Hagen who went from a back marker at the start of the year to victory lane here at race number 9. Great effort by him today. As was well second, whoa, 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 we got a little bit of trouble going to pit road. Julian D'Artagnan's Jr. going to plow to the back of Biggie Spencer. I don't know what that was for. Not sure if he just had trouble braking or if there was some incident between Spencer and D'Artagnan. If I had to guess, actually, I would rather say that Spencer would be upset with D'Artagnan for backing up. So I don't know what that contact was about. Here are the race results. Cody Hagen is your winner. He moves on to the main event. James Silver Fox finishing in an impressive second place, followed by Kate Skirvin, Nicholas Garrett, Norman Dreisen, your top five. Joshua Collard really hustled and made it up to sixth place, followed by Max Watson, Dylan Young, Rick Witt, Alex Pedro, Biggie Spencer, Julian D'Artanius Jr. Sean Angel was a lap down. Jace Adapter was the only car that failed to finish. Let's take a look at your point standings and see who is going to be going for the championship next week in Daytona. Norman Dreisen is your points leader. One point over Julian D'Artanius Jr., followed by Max Watson, Jace Adapter, James Silver Fox, and after that, everyone else is mathematically uneligible to go for the championship. So it's a five-car battle, as Angel, Hagen, Pedro, Skirvin, York, and the rest are all too late. As we head toward the bottom of the standings, we'll make our way over to the main event, the Dascar Regional Pro Cup Series. All 35 drivers racing now. Let's take a look at your starting lineup. This was set just before this race started. Everyone went out for a standard qualifying run. We have only one more race left on the schedule, so this is go time for these drivers. Some drivers are on the verge of missing it. I believe most of the top 20 actually still has a mathematical chance for the championship, but that can be cut drastically by the end of this, as we'll only have one race after this. So 35 cars here today on the grid. And on pole is the number 28 of Derek Pemberton. Now, Derek Pemberton has won a race previously, but he has dropped through the standings in the past couple of weeks. Things through, oh, he makes some contact with the wall. P.J. Williams is going to make the pass. We have a big wreck behind them. Already on the first lap, we have some trouble. 
as Michael Aurelio is going to pass for second. Jake Williams passes for third. Let's take a look at another camera angle of this wreck and let's see all these drivers are scattering everywhere. Fortunately, not too bad for some of them, but a lot of them are going to get held back. As whoa, 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 Alex Smith is going to get turned over by Eric and Race. And that, I believe, is going to put the 42 car out of the event. Not sure about the 65, though, as he's still trying to limp it along. Let's take a look at the onboard. He gets absolutely rocketed up the track. Prince Little John's going to get held up by that. A several drivers pass underneath. P.J. Williams, car number 38. He went to victory lane in the first race of this... Whoa, 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 trouble. Seth Cole has turned. But P.J. Williams, he went to victory lane in our inaugural event. He's been up near the top of the point standings ever since, and he's one of the favorites to win this championship. If you can have a great run today, more trouble. Nathan Minazuki, Jordan Culp. Jordan Culp is a driver that did not want to be involved with this, as Derek Pemberton has some damage as well. Aw, oh, man, that's not good for those drivers. And, whoa, a little more trouble. James Shelley and Chris Aurelio make some contact. Aurelio, I believe, heading down the pit road. And that was a close call for uh, the Englishman in the American car. Another drive around. Cody Hagen, hard contact. Dominic Cousins. Trevor Germain, last week's winner, involved on the front stretch. Let's take a look at another angle at what happened. Cody Hagen was right up near the front of the pack, clipped Jake Williams. And he gets bombarded by the 77 machine. And I believe all three of those drivers are out. As Paul Swanson gets involved too. I think he's going to pull out of it as well. So four drivers lost on the front straightaway. Vincent Allen, car number 01, running up with a, near the front of the pack with the 9 of Jeffrey Finguy. He's having a good run and it looks like he's trying to make his way past Mike Larillo. Who uh, has not had a good run since his win in Kalamazoo. Allen was the winner at the Scotia Speed World earlier in the year. It came as an upset victory at the time, but now he seems like a driver that could win this championship. He's up near the top of the standings. Some trouble ahead of him. Looks like uh, Logan York might have been the driver, as he's pretty slow. P.J. Williams gets held up and put into the wall, and Vincent Allen's going to go from third to first, and he's going to lead that lap. Allen out in front as Mike Lorelio tries to make the pass for second place. Pericles gets lapped, but not without a little bit of a bump. Let's take a look at what happened to this 43 machine. Oh, he got turned to the wall with Robert Piet. It looks like uh, Joseph Ernesto. And whoa, <laughs> Nick Pericles. A lot of close calls today, one of them being Nick Pericles. Jordan Culp is still on track in the number five machine, but that car is not running especially well. He's a couple laps off the pace. Now, his main goal is just to t survive this event as his points lead is in jeopardy. He was this could this is a game changer event. Anything can happen here with the amount of wrecks we tend to have here at Myrtle Beach. And whoa, we got some trouble. Zachary Robinson, Henry Nova, Prince Little John. Joshua Michaels is gonna get held up by that. Joshua Michaels is actually having a, a fairly good run in that zero four machine. But Zachary Robinson gonna lose heavily on that incident. As we uh, look a little further up in the pack, Michael Aurelio has taken the race lead away. Jeffrey Finn guy going to follow him underneath, so Michael Aurelio back up front. He liked being out front, but uh, he hasn't been in many situations where that can happen. He's going to lap Joseph Anesto, but Jeffrey Finn guy is going to get the drop on him. Anthony McCurry still hanging up there. He was involved with the wreck on lap one. And P.J. Williams also going to take advantage on the inside of Michael Aurelio. So easy come, easy go for the 92 machine. As it looks like he might even lose a couple more spots. Oh, Nathan Minazuki on pit road. I think we got a report that Jordan Culp is as well. And I think they're done for today. We'll have to see what happened to those two machines. Nathan Minazuki. Oh, he got sent into the air by Jamie DeFalo. Oh, and Jordan Culp couldn't see... Smash it into the 20 car in the smoke, and that's going to put both of them out of the race. This could be bad for Minazuki. This could hurt his championship contention, as he's been running up there pretty consistently. One bad run could ruin it. Whoa! Jeffrey Finn guy. I know whoa has been the common phrase this weekend, but at Myrtle Beach, anything can happen. It's usually a spectacle if you want to see a car going in any direction but straight. <laughs> PJ Williams back out in the lead. Vincent Allen. A close second place, trying to make the pass. Robert Piet is a lap down, 
I believe the next car. I can't even. I don't even know which car behind them is the next place car. I believe Finn guy, who's a little bit behind, in his number nine machine as they try to pass the 43. Ian Dutta, car number three, having a great race today, sitting up in the top. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa! Alex Hawkins is on his roof. Jake Williams makes some heavy contact. And Ian Dutta, we just, he was in the top 10, but uh, he's going to lose a couple spots on this one. Chris Washer also has some heavy damage to that 23 machine. Alex Hawkins, how is he still driving? My God. And more trouble for uh, Williams on the inside. What happened here? Whoa, 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 whoa. That was uh, Michael Railgang squirrely. Let's go back to the actual wreck. Chris O'Reilly gets turned around. Everyone else gets held up behind it. Prince Little John and Chris Washers would send the 11 car over as more heavy contact. And uh, Chris O'Reilly, that car is pretty beaten up. Seth Cole, car number 80, having a great run today, sitting in the top five. Seth Cole was knocked out of the top 20. This week, and it's been a big battle for him just to stay in that top 20. Kind of like his Utica Home Track Series run last year, where he was just trying to stay in the top 30. So Seth Cole trying to uh, muscle out a good finish today. He's not eligible for the championship, but if he can get a win under his belt, that'd be something to smile about for the 80 machine. He's trying to pass Joseph Ernesto, who's just had hardship after hardship after coming off with an early race lead in the in the championship standings. Now Ernesto just carrying it around the track. Alex DeMarco started near the tail end of the pack, now in the top 10 and gaining. That 74 car looks near spotless. Well, it was near spotless until that, but uh, Alex DeMarco, really happy with the way the 74 car is running. He feels like they can get a good finish out of this if they can just keep out of trouble and not run into the wall again as he's trying to catch up to the rest of the pack. There's Jeffrey Finguy who has gone back to the race lead and he's got quite a bit of a lead over the rest of the pack. Jeffrey Finn guy has been so close to winning these races, but has not been able to actually go to victory lane. Today could be the day, as he's got quite the lead over second place. Looking a little further back, everyone else seems to be caught in traffic. Whoa, Seth Cole gets sent down, and he's going to save it again. Now, Seth Cole saved that first wreck early on, and whoa, whoa, whoa! He's going to get into Michael Aurelio, and both Aurelios are in the wall and around. So Seth Cole not on their good list as P.J. Williams trying to catch up to him for, I believe, second place. Seth Cole has moved up quite a bit in the time we were talking to, uh, looking at uh, Jeffrey Finguy's car. Let's see what happened to Michael Aurelio. And, yeah, he just got spun out. Fortunately, it wasn't any worse than that as that 92 car continues. Zachary Fitzwater, another surprise entry into the top 10. He's been having some trouble in the 72 car as uh, he's not been able to accumulate a lot of points. But today could be a great day for him, as a solid top 10 run could be uh, smiling upon him. The Expedix machine, uh, commonly driven by John Sadino in the Utica Home Check series. In this series, it's Zachary Fitzwater, as he continues his run to try and get... I, I think this might be his first top 10 finish if he were to get it. He might have had one that was close, maybe an 11th place. And whoa, 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 we have some more trouble. Ian Dutta. James Shelley, Jamie DeFalo, I think someone got into Shelley, but I'm not sure who. Joshua Michaels is going to plow into it. I think he's going to put himself out of it. Oh, and the 92 machine of Michael Aurelio, even more trouble. I think that might end his run. We'll see what happens. Ian Dutta just got turned by Anthony McCreary. Jamie DeFalo makes a little bit of contact, and then... Joshua Michaels did not slow down. I think he was trying to get greedy with that track position and end up getting hit six times, I think. Six different drivers plowed into that number zero four. Oh, Jeffrey Finguy got held up behind Zachary Robbins on the inside. I don't know how that happened. Seth Cole now in the race lead. What a turnaround for Seth Cole. As a couple races ago, he was concerned with making the top 20. Now he's leading the field. P.J. Williams trying to make the pass underneath. A little help from Derek Pemberton. However, Pemberton a little slow. Looks like uh, Williams is going to have to give him a shove to get by him. P.J. Williams back to the front of the pack. Seth Cole will go back to second place, but he still has a shot at it. Oh, no, he hit the wall a little bit. We take a look further back to Alex DeMarco, who's moved his way up into the top five. 
So DeMarco definitely showing the ability of that 74 machine. This could be his career best run as he's looking for fourth place Vincent Allen. So DeMarco riding smoothly in the late stages of this event. That's always a good formula for success to be good near the end. As he continues and makes more contact with that wall. Colin Bartel, car number 66. We haven't talked about him at all today. He's actually running in the top 10, so recovering a little bit. He's been uh, working his way back up after that unfortunate run at uh, Bearfield that almost got him the win, but ended up sending him back to the 20s. He's trying to lap Alex Hawkins, who amazingly is still driving. He got sent all the way up into the air. And Laz, who fortunately did not uh, throw anything off to keep him off the racetrack, and he could get a good point stay from that. Seth Cole back out front. Anthony McCreary into the wall, and that's going to give Seth Cole a huge lead with only a little bit to go. He's trying to catch up to Nick Pericles in car number 12 and get by him. He just has to keep it steady, and he should be able to... Oh, no! He's going to make contact with Nick Pericles. Here comes the rest of the field. There's Vincent Allen and Alex DeMarco drafting underneath. Seth Cole is going to get into the wall in this turn as well. And that huge lead ends up dropping him down to third place. As Vincent Allen and Alex DeMarco make the pass underneath. This could be... DeMarco gets spun as well. He was so close to a victory. And he ends up getting turned even more around by Seth Cole. Wow. Up front, Vincent Allen still in the lead. Anthony McCreary has been giving a lot of these front runners some trouble, though. He just will not quit and is trying to get his lap back. Vincent Allen back into the wall. Here comes P.J. Williams, followed by the nine of Jeffrey Finguy. It looks like it could be a three-car battle near the front. As these drivers just not going to give it up. Finguy diving low under Williams. As after Williams has already led that lap. So now Finn Guy is going to take it. Seth Cole trying to catch back up to see if he can go to victory lane. But he's starting to run out of time. PJ Williams into the wall is going to come down into Vincent Allen. And that's going to slow down Allen's progress. As Jeffrey Finn Guy is trying to pull away. Held up by Anthony McCreary, who is a big wild card factor in this. Oh, we have some trouble. Robert Piet, Derek Pemberton, Pemberton saves it. Pemberton trying to put together a run good enough to keep himself in championship contention. Robert Piet, same deal. Finn Guy still out near the front, makes some contact with the wall. Seth Cole starting to catch up. This could be a four car battle now. As Vincent Allen goes underneath, PJ Williams almost makes a little bit of contact. Pericles is now the lap car they need to get by in that number 12. A couple of drivers have wrecked when they've been near Nick Pericles in past events, so this race he's been pretty clean. Vincent Allen is going to take the race lead and come down to the line. Vincent Allen is going to win his second career DASCAR Regional Pro Cup Series event. That's the most of anyone in the DASCAR Regional Pro Cup Series, excluding the lights. So congratulations to Vincent Allen and the 0-1 team winning yet again and what a great battle at the end of the event Prince Liljohn starting to come into pit lane a little fast hits the wall and Colin Bartell goes tumbling to the side Derek Pemberton's also hurt let's take a look at your race results after a little bit of chaos on the pit road Vincent Allen was your overall winner followed by PJ Williams, Seth Cole and Jeffrey Finguy. Finguy led so many laps but is still not going to get it. Colin Bartell, fifth place. Great job for him but unfortunately ended up on his roof on pit road. Followed by Alex DeMarco, Ian Dutta, Zachary Fitzwater, Skyler Dixon, ninth place and Logan York, your top ten. Followed by Anthony McCreary, Alex Hawkins, Chris Aurelio, Jamie DeFalu, Joseph Vanesto, Nick Pericles, Prudence Littlejohn, Derek Pemberton, Robert Piet, Alex Smith was the last car to finish the event. Michael Aurelio, James Shelley, Joshua Michaels, Henry Nova, Zachary Robinson, Jackson Darby, Jake Williams, Chris Washer, Nathan Minazuki, the points leader Jordan Culp, Cody Hagen, who won the main of the uh, lights event, Dominic Cousins, Trevor Germain, and the rest all out of the event. What a shame for them. As we take a look at your point standings, 
Let's see who's still in contention for the championship. Jeffrey Finguy has the points lead. Anthony McCurry in second, followed by Vincent Allen in third. Chris Washer fourth. Jordan Culp drops to fifth. Colin Bartell is in sixth place, followed by Trevor Germain and P.J. Williams. So it's an eight-car battle for the championship when we head to Daytona. Nathan Minazuki is going to miss it, and it's because he went out of the event. Alex Hawkins, your top ten, followed by Robert Piet, Derek Pemberton, Joseph Vanesto, Jackson Darby, Eric and Rage, James Shelley, Zachary Robinson, Seth Cole, Jamie DeFalo, and Prudence Littlejohn. There's still a chance to make the top 20 for some of those drivers outside of the top 20. As next week, we're going to the Daytona Motor Speedway, but not for the full course, just the backstretch. We're short track racing at Daytona. Should be a great race, and we're going to crown two champions, so we'll see you there.